Um, I took my cue from Betsy Show when we first read. She said, uh, I miss January. And uh, I started saying, I miss October. Nobody thought that was very funny. <laughs> it worked once, Betsy, but I think people had uh, horrible thoughts of what it might mean in my, in my case. Um, this was a great opportunity. You know, I got this email from Marty Pottinger one day about being involved with this project. And uh, she said, I'm so busy here. We all are at SMCC. We're you know, at maximum capacity. Why don't I have some time to do such a thing? And once I did, I thought, oh my god, I could have missed this. If I'd have pleaded out being too busy, what a, what a, that would have been terrible. Uh, it was my great privilege to uh, go for ride-alongs with Senior Lead Officer Gail Petty, whose uh, territory is officially Munjoy Hill, but the first night we were on, I think we saw Munjoy Hill for about two minutes, and then we were at the jail three times, and uh, back at the station, we were all over, all over Portland. But uh, riding with Gail uh, is uh, easily, you know, uh, 10 hours in the, in the police car with Gail is easily worth three credits. And I felt like I you know, <laughs> did some continuing ed. Some, and I'm going to put in for professional development uh, credit for that here at work, I think. Um, I, I want to read a poem about my first, first ride with her when I <laughs> uh, managed to uh, keep my lunch down. Um, but Marty wanted me to read this one, which is a little more serious. So this is the October poem. But I think it also speaks to, uh, I would say, the diversity of uh, job skills that the, today's police officer has to have. And the poem is called Lives of the Saints. Francis of Assisi couldn't have had a sweeter face than the guy exiting the passenger side of a Subaru on Vesper to say softly, I have a protection order, but he showed up at work today. I'm afraid he could be in the hallway. We'll go in with you, Gail says, then leads the truck up three flights flashlight searching the dusky stairwell. Outside the apartment is a small gift bag, an artifact crafted at the hospital where its artisan has spent recent weeks. An attached note says, I still love you. We've come from Grant Street, an intractable, mouthy drunk, warned not to bother firefighters. But now this sad man's shoulders cave in. He weeps. Gail offers to check rooms, but no, his ex doesn't have a key. He and Gail block the exit of a large black cat, arching a fluffy back, the constancy of pets who always stay inside. He wants to be together, but I can't do it anymore. You have to think about you, Gail says. Here's my card. Anything's wrong, call me. The woman driving the Subaru waves goodbye. We linger beside the cruiser. Streetlights come on, damp from East End Beach, <clears throat> defining the night air. As blinds are closed in the front room above, it's the end of October. Two more days, and these streets will be full of ghosts. Thank you. <laughs>